Hey everyone, it's uh, Scott Norris here from Virtualize Me. Uh, today I'm having a look at the new custom forms in 7.4. Now if you've seen from some of my previous videos with XS, and I've shown on the stage of v, uh, VMworld and VForums and VMugs uh, all over the place, uh, just showing the capability of what XS has been able to bring, uh, especially in regards to what were referred to as ASD forms, but XS forms now. Uh, I wanted to recreate that in the new custom forms. So I wanted to do a speed compare, see how, um, how if one's better than the other. Uh, during making some of the, the custom forms, you know, it, it, some things don't 100% translate. Now, the demo I'll be showing today has been reusing the actions that are already used. So unfortunately, uh, because of a limitation that I've seen in the custom forms, is that it will run the action no matter what we I can't for an external value and this is what I'll show is if we have a look at this custom form here if I go to edit this one uh, we'll be able to say for example uh, once this loads up we go to the project tab now say this project code uh, for instance so what the problem it's gonna have is that I'm running this action and I'm putting these inputs in but there's no way I can say you know only run action if you know a field is populated uh, which you can do in excess so if I, if I have a look at this if, if we go conditional value um, we can't say we can set the value and then we go if a certain field is empty but I can't actually put an external value in there so what I mean by this is if I look at this custom form here, which is using the presentation layer of uh, VRO, uh, which surfaces up into VRA if you import it as an XS, uh, XS blueprint, uh, we'll be able to see that this project code here, uh, that calls the project, but we can uh, project, sorry, that, not that one, that's not the best one to see. Uh, which one? Yeah, I'll just find one that's here. Um, here's an example: is that we can say, you know, if image type, which is this one here, equals nothing, then make do nothing else run an action, uh, which means that you know it will only run an action when it meets that requirement. Um, what I've found with the custom forms is that it runs the actions no matter what. And you get some errors, so you actually have to then look at, okay, now I'm gonna have to change some of my actions so that if an error returns, that it just returns nothing, just a blank uh, form. So I'm really interested to see if the speed comparison, if that slows it down because it's always running um, and you know, we'll step through, we'll time it, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, and as you can see here with um, OGNL uh, within these, is that we can actually, if I look at the application, so here's a, you know, a way that we can do this, we can do the mandatory input and the high parameter based on a certain value, that's fine. Uh, but here when we do a list, again, if machine type, uh, which is up here, uh, equals nothing then don't run that action but if we're saying you know if machine type equals server then I want to run this action and what the great thing about it is if we edit this action we can actually see that we're nesting actions within actions um, where obviously I can't do that in the custom form so I had to go out and actually create new actions um, in some cases, I didn't create them for all, and we'll see the errors come up, but the form still works because they'll refresh as we go through. So let's um, let's give that a go. Now, I'll cancel out of that. We'll go back in. So now all these four issues, oh yep. I just changed this so that We can have a minimum value of one, maximum value of eight, and this one can 
B. Uh, minimum value of one o two four, and this one can be four o nine six. And what's the final issue? So I just changed what I did is I actually had a the the profile size drop down, but then I go oh well the other form doesn't have that, so let's try and make it uh, as quick as possible. It could just that I didn't want to go and change absolutely everything. All right, let's give this a run. So what we'll run through is my original uh, uh, form that I have in my lab. So we go to catalog, go IAS, and we create VSV machine. So this is going away and getting the project codes that are assigned to my user that's currently logged in. I just like project. Yep, next. One and one's fine. Virtualize me. Image. Hardware one and two oh four eight application serialize application server environment availability will leave as normal no storage no networking and request number submit cool pretty painless let's um look at the new one Use the new form, so it definitely looks a lot prettier, and I've tried to make it almost identical in every way. New form. Now what it's doing now is because it's got no condition to run, it's actually running every action on every screen, from what I can understand of it. It's grabbing the projects for me and it's going to error because some of the actions are just being reused. So I'll select the same project. You can see that they've, you know, they all come back. Okay, request. I'll leave one and one. Machine details, domain. I'll leave it at CentOS. Hardware, I'll go two and two forty eight. Application Availability, I'll leave. And no, no, no. Submit. And that goes and works fine. Now they were pretty similar, uh, which is good. We have a look back here if I go and load this up again. We'll have a look at the errors uh, that come back on this and I'll explain them in a bit more detail. So, have a look at the errors here. It's basically saying that they're unable to start these actions. Now the reason for that is that project name failed to grab because I haven't selected a project yet where the um, XAS on a project will only load once I've selected the project in here. So the name action will only run once I select a project in here. Um, meaning that I'm going to have to go back and tweak my actions uh, to catch the error um, for that and just return nothing. And that would stop this error from coming. But as we saw, the error didn't actually stop us going through it because as we filled in more of the um, the fields, uh, they reran those actions and, and got the values back that were correct. So other than that, it was pretty straightforward. 
Okay, so let's uh, do a speed run and see what they both look like. And this time with the errors have been fixed, I've gone back and tweaked my actions. So they won't error, they'll just report return blank if um, the value hasn't been passed in. So let's do it. First the old faithful. I won't be actually timing this, it's really just for that initial load because this will be dependent on how quick I run through everything. And we can see that we're not actually being stopped by loading in any uh, instance. Done. All right. Now for new and improved. Done. As we can see, um, the excess form is about 10 seconds faster. Now, look, this isn't exact science uh, by any stretch. Uh, but it just gives you an idea of, you know, trying to convert an, an XAS or existing XAS uh, blueprint uh, to a custom form. Now, again, because custom forms are different beasts, so you would want to design it accordingly. Uh, meaning that, you know, when you created that XAS form, you created actions, you created other things uh, in line with that XAS form. Uh, a custom form isn't as isn't an excess form so you know if they were around beforehand you may have done it a little differently your actions may have done things a little bit more smartly you might have might have, might have done more in a single action who knows uh, but this is just really a side-by-side -side comparison and yeah I uh, hope you guys got something out of it and see you next time cheers bye